Murph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness and Fabulous, Fabulous Friday. I can't tell you how great it is, and I got the coolest present. It was an early Christmas present. A buddy of mine dropped it off just the other day. One of my partners in crime, been with me for a long time, and um, I wasn't even home. He just left it here for me, and it is the coolest article I think I've ever read. For the reason this is it's not me expounding all these virtues. It's some of the greatest players in the world speaking about the greatest conductors in the world and talking about the concept that is exactly what we've been doing. Okay? You saw the thumbnail. Surprise, surprise, it's about the Chicago Symphony. <laughs> I'm a little obsessive. What can I say? Anyway, let's see what we got, and I'll tell you what's going on. Anyway, hellacious double C's with hardly any warm-up. I played a couple notes. Hellacious double C's going right into one of the most iconic and difficult lyrical pieces uh, in the orchestral repertoire. That is Mahler third offstage solo, which is one of the most beautiful pieces in the whole world. And Herseth probably had the most definitive. And John Ware had just uh, Kmart. There's some great ones. Okay, as demanding as that is, and that's just a section of it, as you can imagine, that little nick that I had in the middle of it, that would have ruined a recording. That would have cost me my job. I mean, that's, that's how great, great that these guys are. I mean, you can clam. Johnny, Johnny Ware once told me, I mean, clams, everybody clams, okay? But you can't clam on the, the important stuff. You can't clam on Petrushka. You can't clam on Mahler Fifth. You can't clam... All the biggies have to be as clean as pure as the driven snow. Anyway, we're getting off the subject. A good friend of mine who knows who he is and he watches these uh, quite uh, religiously dropped off an article in the New York Times and it was recent, November 18th, by a gentleman named Michael Cooper and it is an awesome article. And I'm going to put it word for word in the, this book of the month, which will be out Monday. But believe it or not, it is about the Chicago Symphony and the two the guy that we're talking about, Bataillon. Okay, and a new French horn player that came in, he's also 35, named David Cooper, and how these guys are going to compete with the legacy of the past and bring it forward and all this, and it is talks about the uh, conductors. Very, very interesting. And what happened was, uh, the Chicago Symphony recently did a um, perform series of performances at Carnegie Hall, 
And this guy went up and obviously listened to the performance and critiqued the performance of the New York Times, but also took uh, the brass section out back and talked to him about just that. Just what we've been talking about, and I rail against forever, about how the the the, the um, reputation of the past is affecting the f what present and the future. And it's very very interesting. I said it will be in the book of the month. Anyway, the title is called the Chicago Symphony's Brass. It is world famous. Hear it blast. Okay, right up our alley, guys. This is exactly what I'm talking about. And this is what I love so much about the article. And every one of you haters out there, now he doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, exactly what Jerry and I have been talking about for 45 years is right here. Now, Jay Friedman, 80 years old, first trombone player who has been around a while, knows a lot about bringing, you know, the past and bringing the future and all this sort of stuff. And he said, and I've talked about this before, my experience when I heard them at Carnegie Hall with Schulte. He said, under Fritz Reiner, and also they listened to excerpts of the old guys and commented on it. And one of the excerpts that they listened to was the one I gave you for homework about two weeks ago, and I will also put it down, and I want you to listen to it again. Okay? Now, they were saying that under Fritz Reiner, when it was, you know, the Chicago Brass, they didn't say the Chicago Symphony. The reputation was the Chicago Brass, okay? And when Schulte came along, he wanted to actually get them to play louder. And he had trouble getting them to play louder. Think about that. Listen to that excerpt and say that Schulte, think that Schulte wanted it louder, okay? And Schulte was the one that actually backed off and brought his concept down a little. Now, I told you before, when I heard them at Carnegie Hall, they played several things, you know, some Hindemith and, and uh, you know, a thing with a beautiful lyrical thing with, with a singer, uh, Mahler, and, um, you know, all the lyrical playing, but then they finished with Don Juan. And guys, I'm telling you, Schulte did everything short of just turning, say, come on guys, louder, louder. I had never heard anything like that in my life. Now, what I was listening to was Vacchiano Broyles and John Ware every single week in my lesson. We had stage passes to the Met. We had stage backstage passes to the New York Philharmonic to all rehearsals. I heard them a lot. And that is when Phil Smith just got to New York. Okay? And I'm telling you what, I've never heard anything like this before. Never heard anything like this, and I've never heard anything since. Until I heard that little clip. Okay? Now, this is the reputation of the Chicago Symphony brass or the Chicago brass. Anyway, as it turns out, I knew it. Esteban Bataya, and they talked about him, 35 years old, okay, grew up emulating Herseth, listening to it every day, trying to, to, um, try to replicate that sound, okay? And this is what he said. Now, I'm not sure how much English he speaks. I never met him, okay? But he said... Hang on, hang on, I want to get it right. Okay, this is what he was talking about. Quote, you can hear all the, ta the attacks, Mr. Bataillon said, referring to the decisive way each note is struck. It's a pure sound with a clear attack. And guys, if that isn't what we've been talking, that I've been preaching, the notes pop, guys, this is the way you're supposed to play the trumpet. <laughs> Any brass instrument, starting with that pop. That is why Herseth sounds so much better, and Bataillon sounds so much better than the other guys. Chris Martin, Rolfs, Hooten, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Don't kill me yet, okay? Also, a quote from Pokornoi, who's the tuba player, okay? Been there for a while. He's in, he's in his early 60s, about my age. That when he started the Chicago Symphony, one of his first conductors was the guest Leonard Slatkin, for whom he had played in the St. Louis Symphony. He was with the St. Louis before he went. One of the first guest conductors was his pal. Okay, I want to get this right. And Pokorni said, I went to him and asked him, and I quote, what do I have to do to my St. Louis sound to match here? Okay. Now, in other words, the St. Louis Symphony was not touching what they were doing in Chicago, and he was a little concerned, how am I going to keep up? 
And what did the slat can say to him? This is from a conductor. And he said, what you really have to do is put a lot of front end on the note. Guys, that's an attack. That is an attack. And that is everything that's, whether they can put it into proper the words or not, that is what everybody is hearing. The brilliant sound and the pop of the attack. It is, it's like Harry James. It's like Maurice Andre. It is extraordinary. That is what Jerry and I have been preaching for, well, Jerry longer than me, 45 years plus and going, guys, that is it. And I'll tell you what, okay, very quickly, I know, I know that the concept has changed since then. I've been talking about it a lot. And I'm not saying Chris Martin, Tom Rolfs, Tom Hooten, NUA in San Fran, he's not very good. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that other group is not, are not terrific players. They are. But it is a different concept and the notes don't pop. And that means their tongue isn't in the right place and their tone, power, range, and endurance is limited compared to Bataillon, compared to Herseth, compared to Mel Broyles, compared to Vacchiano, all of it. It's just limited. I'm not going to say they stink. I'm not going to say that. I didn't say that. Don't get into a discussion with me, you haters. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. They're terrific. It's not my cup of tea. I grew up listening once a week to Vacchiano, Broyles, and John Ware. That's what's in my ear. And then listening to everything I could about Herseth. That's what's in my ear. And I don't buy what's going on today, as you know that. And these guys don't either. <laughs> That's it. Eat and drink fruits and vegetables. Live your life with true power and have a great, great weekend. Love you all.